So this is the leak rope project. So it's an Arduino. I've built this on a Mega just because that's what I had hanging around. Um, I've got an Ethernet shield on there because this also integrates into my home automation on HomeSeer. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about that later, how that works. Um, but it, it completely works standalone as well. Um, this little bit of Vero board has four versions of this circuit. Um, so this is a high impedance voltage divider here. Um, so at the moment, um, so it's got four analog inputs. Um, there's no real limit, it's, it's however many analog inputs you've got on your Arduino, Arduino, but this is a 20 by 4 LCD. The shower area, well basically it's underneath where the shower sometimes leaks. I have a leak rope for the boiler. Um, I've got a water softener, which now has the potential to leak potentially, so I've got one for that. And the spare one I'm going to put above all in my computer room basically, because I've got more pipes above there. So it's belt and braces, not really the steady state ADC reading, and burns that into flash, uh, into an EEPROM. Um, so that's this percentage, this is just a deviation from the baseline. So recall that this is a potential divider, so it's just going to get a, an ADC reading of about 512, which is 50%. Uh, and all we're trying to do is just bias the input up or down. So if I plug the leak, leak rope in, remember that I've put a 6 meg resistor at the end of it. So if I plug the resistor in, or plug the leak rope in, you can see that the, the shower's gone into warning mode. Um, and you'll, you'll hear a very occasional beep as well, a beep every 10 seconds. So what I need to do now is recalibrate that. So calibrate that all to zero. So now that's basically baseline the whole system and it's burnt into flash now. So even on a power cycle it will remember what all the baseline readings are. So effectively it's to set you, your resistance. If I unplug the rope now the reading goes up. So it's gone up to 120% and this tiny little buzzer but it's really loud. Just keep it keep it So it's gone up to 124. So that's that's the that's the fault mode. So plug it back in again. You can see how the value changes very slowly. That's deliberate. So again, it's this capacitor that slows it down, but also I'm doing averaging on the Arduino as well. So if you if you quickly grab it, you won't get any spikes. So if I um, just put my fingers on it. It goes into warning mode. Um, I don't really know whether just ten percent off of off of normal is good enough to be a warning. Um, again, I'm going to have to just suck it and see. I want to baseline it. I can always go into the code and change it around. So if I continue to sort of short it out, you can see the values coming out. And like if I let go of it, you can see it, it's nice and slow, which is how I want it to be. I don't want it flat spiking up and down and just getting one spike and taking a low reading. And if I let go of it. Okay, so you might have just heard the in the background there. I um, mean it only does it every minute, so you probably won't catch it again. But um essentially just talks back to home seer. Um this is using Enigma Enigma Theatre's Arduino plugin, which is really, really good. Um, I'm using it in custom API mode, so I'll show you the code how I did that. Um, but even on its own, um, it's a pretty decent standalone device as it stands. Um, you can have as many re leak, leak ropes as you like. Um, I've just bought another whole roll of um, leak rope. Um, not the cheapest stuff in the world. Um, I buy it from a place called CMR Electrical. Um, they'll deal, deal with private people. Um, they will terminate it for you as well. Um, I guess they'll probably charge you a load for it. I, I didn't really bother asking, so I was just interested in the rope itself. Um, this is 10 meters of rope. Uh, I think it was 50 pounds, um, and then they wanted to charge 16 pound carriage for that, which I said was a bit excessive. So they they stuck it in a registered jiffy in jiffy bag for me, which is 60 galvanic corrosion or something. It should be like going negative and positive. You know, AC, so like perhaps. 24 volts AC or something um, and I sort of understand that to be honest with you but um, I've built it based on DC and it works so I'm going to ignore that and uh, suck it and see 
but um, yeah, let's see if I can get home here to um, say Water League again. Water League. Okay, so you heard that it, it, it doesn't know how to spell, it doesn't know how to pronounce leak. Um, it's text to speech, and it can't it can't say um, leak. I've been trying different spellings of the word leak, but um, yeah, that proves that it's just talking back to the home automation and once something's in home automation. Now I've got a nice new case for my project, uh, it was before. I'll use a cable gland there for the cable inputs. There's an ethernet shield and I'm just powering off of uh, USB 5 volts at the moment. I will use um, a 12 volt uh, input. Also added a tiny little calibrate switch at the top here which I'll show you the inside. So I can just click that when I need to calibrate the ropes. Inside. can see I've got the four line display up at the top which screws to the front uh, is an Arduino Uno with an Ethernet shield. Now I'm only using an Ethernet shield because I'm talking back to home here, home automation. Um, there is one of the problems is that it's very very tight. Um, you're pretty much jamming against the top of these pins um, so you probably do have a bigger case but it does the job. I've also retrofitted the the beeper onto the display, onto the, my little daughter board there. So there's a little beeper on there, and then I did a calibrate switch at the top there. But um, yeah. So I'm just going to show you how the leak rope's been installed on my boiler. Um, essentially, I've just run the wire around everywhere where water might leak. Uh, it was that zone valve on the right that started dripping last year and it was dripping onto that box below which made that little spat to try and direct it away. But effectively all I've done is just put the wire everywhere So this section is going to show you how I've integrated the Arduino into um, HomeSeer. HomeSeer is my home automation system. I'm using a plugin called, um, uh, written by Greg Dempster, who will known as Enigma Theatre on the forums. Um, I'm using this particular board in what's known as API mode. This means that you can write your own code and send data in and out of home seer according to whatever you want so of course this opens up the whole world of possibilities with anything you can do in an arduino which is just about anything you can then bring that into home seer so my configuration is very simple i've got four api inputs so an input from home seer's point of view is home is data from the arduino into the um into home here you can config, configure outputs to send data back out or what have you so we've just got four analog uh, four inputs that correlate into the, the four um, analog inputs on the actual device in the devices view in home here you can see i've got the four um, devices set up on board number four if i just put my finger on one of these just let this value come down a little bit you'll see that the value updates the nip changed to there and the icon changed the way that works for the icons changing is um, you see it's changed back again now so if we look on here on here I've configured the parameters of the device so if I see 0 to 50 Put the leak icon 51 to 80 or 79 but warning 80 to 109 is okay and anything over 110 onwards is default mode so i've just got this leak rope in, uh, in my room at the moment so i'll put the if i unplug unplug this leak rope the shower one will go to 
fault mode. You can hear the actual device going straight into the fault. So you hear the audible alarm. If we plug it back in again, it will return back to normal. If I put my fingers on it, just bring the value down to warning. Should get a warning. Yeah, I've done the so you can see that I get audible alerts for what's going on, whatever's happening. If I just take my fingers off the relief rope, that'll return back to normal. So, how does that work? I have a number of events configured. So, in the events section, I have just if if statements effectively so if the leak rope one is less than 50 percent um, say something and then send an email um, it sends an email to me it's obviously not my email address and I tell it to also send I use this like variable there so that's the device ID in home here so I'd get it to send me the actual value of the leak rope so at the moment it's early days yet so I'm just sort of keeping an eye on it how it works we look at the code itself so I'll give you a quick run through of the code this section is going to show you a little bit about the code that runs this project um, for a long time I've been using the um, development tool that comes with the Arduino itself I thought this was the only tool that you could use um, it's okay if you know what you're doing but if you're doing a lot of trial and error and you're not a great coder um, which I'd put myself into that banner um, it can be a bit tricky and it's, it's difficult to do debugging. Um, in my day job, I use Visual Studio a lot. And um, one of the cool things I like about Visual Studio is just um, I like all the coloring. I like the fact that if you just miss a simple um, semicolon off or something, the, um, the, the in environment will tell, you know, hint as to what the problem is. Um, if you want to comment something out, you can just click on something like that. Um, and uh, add comments. So what I'm using is something called V Micro, Visual Micro. So it's a plugin for Visual Studio, and effectively brings all the functionality of Arduino world into Visual Studio. So for me, it's the uh, the best of both worlds, best of both worlds, and it's made development for me much much easier. So I'll try and talk you through some of the sort of major parts of the code. So just to recap, I'm using this um, in Home Seer, I'm using Enigma Theatre's plugin um, for the Arduino. So there's a mixture of my code and um, the plugins code where it actually does the talking back to Home Seer. You can use this code as is, straight out of the box, um, and it will just realize that the Home Seer is not connected and that part of the code won't run. Um, so you can just run it as a standalone device. Um, I may well post a separate version that's got all of that stripped out, but I'll just try and talk you through some of the bits of it. Um, I can't explain it every single step, um, but um, we should get fairly close. So first of all, I'll start by explaining that I'm using a 20 by 4 I squared C LCD. Um, these is plugged into an Arduino Uno, so I'm using A4 and A5 for making that connection. The leak ropes go into A0 to A3. The calibrate button, which is a digital input, <coughs> is on digital 2. The beeper that you hear is the output, so the positive comes from digital output 3 to the beeper and down to 0 volts. Um, this is to do with saying, is it IP for Arduino? No, so this is the plug-in code, not my code. Um, I... I oh, have to, on, on the um, Enigma Theatre code, he uses the EEPROM to store the IP address of the home series server. Uh, he uses the EEPROM library, which is the standard library. I actually use an extended version of that library. The only difference between it really is if you want to write an integer, it will actually write the two items for you in one go, rather than having to sep do two separate writes. And it's got a bit of protection in there as well. So it was just an easier library. So. They seem to be completely backwards compatible, but you can't have them both in, both on the include on the same piece of code. So I comment that one out. 
various other includes for just uh, the Ethernet and UDP packets and things. You have to include um, the library for the I squared C LCD. This is all to do with um, setting up the values for my leak robe now. So I've, I've commented in the bits of setup for my code. Um, this is to do the maximum allowed of writes to the EEPROM, stop you burning out the EEPROM if you overwrite the same cell too many times. This is setting the address of the LCD. This is the 3F address of my particular LCD. I think the uh, I think it was 027 was the standard and it, it wasn't working. And you can get an I squared C bus scanner that will just go through the entire bus looking for the address of the device. And that's how I worked out the address of my one. You can you can it's a bit like a it's parallel bus. You can work out different things that are sat on there. This is the number of readings to out. So I do um, digital smoothing if you like. So I take ten readings on the analog input and then just average them over. And it's just to take. Uh, just to smooth out any spikes or anything. So this is just a fixed number. 10 seems to be enough. You could go a little bit more. I think 32 is the maximum you can put. Um, more variables are setting up. So this is just all basic setup. Um, I've set up a little subroutine or function for the beeper. So you could just call the beeper with the type of beeper noise that you want. And essentially all of this is, is just a delay between the beeps. So zero, there's no, no beeping. This is like quite fast beeping, intermittent beeping, and very occasional beeping. So all you do is you call the beep the function, and then you just put in the word that you want it to do. Um, just other various counters around there. So I'm using the millisecond, so I'm not going wild, making sure the whole code doesn't grind to a halt while it's waiting for something to happen. Here I'm defining the. Let's um, these setting back to false. Essentially, uh, here I'm defining which buttons are going to be used for the, the calibrate button and um, so I'll put in here for the calibrate button and the output for the buzzer. So I've got a debug here, so I send a lot of information back out to the serial port. Vmicro does actually have some really good debugging fit features where you can have watch points and break points and things and look at what, what, the, var what the values of variables are. Um, previously, you had to like push all that out to the serial port to try and work out what it's doing. Um, but I still use the serial monitor when I'm trying to use it. So I just I just set up a constant and set that to true or false, depending on whether I'm trying to debug or whether I'm just using it normally. You can define the number of leak ropes. I've got it set to four mainly because I've got a 20 by four display. You could have more ropes now if you used a, a mega board. Um, you could probably have seven or eight, however many analog inputs there are on there, but four seems enough. I pump the data for each rope into an array. Um, I also have a baseline, so we have the live data coming in from the ropes from the analog inputs. I have a baseline and I have an array, which is the baseline of information that's pulled in from EEPROM. So the way the code works is that we have the um, we have a you press the calibrate button on first startup it will write the baseline values back into EEPROM and from there on out it will, it will just compare what it's reading to what it was stored. Um, so when you see the 100% it means it's, it's a match, if it's 110% it's gone higher and if it's gone lower. So that's stored in permanently. I store the deviation in another array. So again this is just the end of the setup so all of that up there is all the setup for my bit of code. This is um, the Enigma Theatre code, so it just says don't change anything. We then go into the, the setup part. Um, this part here is where he's initialising all of the bits for Homes here. And then we drop into the setup for my my elements of the code. Um, so if I'm doing serial monitor, it's set to true, then I initialise a serial port. Um, I, am, I make sure the array is empty, um, so just go and pad, pad that out of zeros switch the LCD on, switch the LCD backlight on, and then I put the messages onto the LCD. So this is where you'd customize the messages for your particular um, devices. I could make it more sophisticated, so I could get it. So Homes here sends the labels down to the Arduino and it would populate them dynamically, but I'm not particularly bothered about something like that, but pretty much anything's allowed. Um, Again, you'd probably need to look up this library, but it's quite a neat library and it just stops you overburning a particular location. 
um, set up the I/O. So button one is an input with a pull up, and then I just that just goes down to ground. So you just short the short the pin to ground to initiate a, a calibrate, and the output the digital output is for the um, the sounder. Um, I then pull in the baseline information from the EE prom. Um, again, if the serial debugging's on, it will show you what's going on. So that's the end of the setup. We then move on to um, the main loop. So the main loop runs all the time. Um, uh, the main loop runs all the time, and then every every periodic time, which I think just for the demonstration here is about every two seconds, I send data to home here. So where is it? Interval. Yeah. So every every two thousand milliseconds, every two seconds. It will send. It will transmit the values to home seer. You don't really even need to do it for that, but for the for the demonstration, I'm I'm sending it fairly often. Um, I might just set that back to ten thousand actually. So just coming back into the main loop loop again. So what happens is it counts right. Obviously, I just have loops for the number of loops for. I have a loop for the number of ropes that you've coded in. Um, I then call this function called averager, um, where it will just pull in 10 values from the leak rope and just set an average. Um, it then works out the deviation from the, the data that it's just grabbed and the data from the baseline and give you a percentage deviation. Again, more debugging here. So it will pump out the data onto the serial port if you want to do that. Um, then essentially, I've just got a bunch of if statements here. So um, there's a little bit of a bodge here just to clear the when when you've got four when you've got three digits on the LCD display, then it changes like to 100 and then it goes to 99. There's only two digits, and you get you get like two percentage symbols at the end. So it just moves the cursor around and just pads it out with white to clean up the display. So bit of a bit of a bodge really. Um, we then just print the rope deviations. Remember, this is a, a loop that's going round, um, going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I just print the deviation value onto the screen, and moving the cursor down each time. Um, so now this part here is where we do, um, where we actually like do the checks. So. If the percentage deviation is less than 80, it does warning mode. So it'll, it will display warning on the LCD and the buzzer will start beep beeping warning as well. If it's less than 50 and more than zero, it will do leaking. So it turns the backlight uh, on. I think this, this is a hangover actually. Uh, I think my idea was I was gonna have the LCD backlight was gonna be off, off when um, it was normal and when there's a problem it would turn the backlight back on but I've not bothered with that. Um, if it's more than 110 then print fault. So basically if it's less than 80 it's warning, if it's less than 50 it's leaking and if it's more than 110 it's fault. So again this is where it's calling my function the buzzer fault so I just tell it whatever it is. All it is is just telling the delay between the sound pitches uh, and then buzzer off. Um, this is the calibrate. So if digital read button one goes low, it then calls another function called set baseline, which I'll show you in a moment. So this is all of the leak rope. So this bit here is again is connected. So this is where is 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 the Arduino connected to home seer. So again, this is just whenever you use the API mode, it will just sort of prompt you where to put paste in your little bits of code. Um, again, I'm not sending an update on every single loop because it's unnecessary and you just be flooding the home seer with thousands of packets. So I just do a count and if we're like 5,000 um, milliseconds in then send an update. And all it does is it just loops around the, ver around the array and transmits the rope data. So send to home seer is a keyword um, and just sends the percentage deviation from each um, each rope. So we just look back on here, wherever it was. So those values all arrive into there. Um, so I've got three functions. I've got my averager function. So it just fetches 10 readings. So you, you 
you call the function tell, telling it which rope number you want to pull in. It analog reads from that analog input, takes takes 10 readings, and then returns the, the average. So that's the average of function. So we just look back on here, wherever it was. So those values all arrive into there. Um, so I've got three functions. I've got my average of function. So it just fetches 10 readings. So you, you, you call the function tell, telling it which rope number you want to pull in. It analog reads from that analog input, takes, takes 10 readings and then returns the, the average. So that's the average of function. The baseline function um, will basically take the current, the current values and just push, burn them into EEPROM. So I'm using this um, extended uh, function. This is the uh, extended EEPROM thing where you can do, you can send an integer straight to it. The standard library doesn't allow you to do that. So um, we just put those in there. You need to, yeah, so that's that. I put a little bit of a delay in there just to let it settle down. And then here we have the, the loop for the, uh, the function for buzzer. Um, and really all it's doing is it's just waits for the, the interval. So you, you call the buzzer with the interval. So 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, and it just beeps on and off according to that. And a little bit of sort of kludgy sound. So if it's zero, it turns it off and what have you. Uh, and that's, that's the end of the code. Um, as with all sort of Arduino ones for the Greg's program, you have to leave all this other code in there. So this is all of the code that comes in with the, the API. You just need to make sure that's in there and he just calls all the functions. So I didn't write any of that. That's nothing to do with me. So that's how it works. Um, when you want to... So one of the benefits of using vMicro is that it's very good for doing debugging. So I'll show you how you can set a watch or a breakpoint, whatever you want to do. So you press F9 on a line, put this little dot there, edit actions, and then you can say the value of i, i is, use curly brackets, put an i in there, uh, close that down, uh, make sure it's set to debug mode, and compile and push it out to the Arduino. Once it's compiled, it will launch the debugger for you. And then you can watch what's going on. So if I just bring these windows back in. So this is what you probably traditionally use in um, you know, with just the ordinary Arduino development environment, just using the serial port. If I sort of bring some faults on, you can see that I, I had it going different uh, loops than that. It's running a bit slow because I'm doing video capture and everything at the same time. Um, but you can see in the output trace here, it's showing you the value of that watch point. So the value of the I is this. You can see that coming up and it's also catching it here for you. Um, this would normally be going as well, but it's, I think we're just overloading one server a bit. Um, but yeah, that's the, the benefit of the, the watch points and, uh, you can put like watches or stops, whatever you want. Um, you just do F9 condition. So you can say, if something's like this, then do that. But for me, this has been a bit of a revelation being able to actually do debugging of a piece of code. So I hope you've enjoyed that video on how to use, uh, how to build a leak rope detection system. It's still semi sort of prototype for me, really. I'm, um, I'm still testing it. I'm going to put some more ropes in and see how it goes. But that's basically all the hardware, the electronics, the code and the integration into HomeSet. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.